Hello, 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 hello. This is Controlled Pairs with Controlled Pairs Gaming. Gentlemen, today we are going to be taking a look at this Mark III SSTO space plane that I've designed in Kerbal Space Program 1.0. My intent with this Mark III SSTO was to design a, a workhorse. I've actually named it the Mark III workhorse for my 1.0 save. And uh, this guy hopefully is eventually going to be uh, the SSTO that is responsible for transporting cargo to my space station in orbit around Kerbin in a low Kerbin orbit. As you can see, it is powered by a total of eight rapier engines. It's got quite a few air intakes on there as well. And uh, overall, it's a pretty good looking space plane. Now, since you're watching this video, I'm sure most everyone is familiar that the new mechanics released with Kerbal Space Program 1.0 introduced an aerodynamic model that requires us to do a little bit of higher thinking whenever we're designing our SSTOs. In some ways it's made designing single stage to orbit space planes a little bit easier but in other ways it's quite more difficult. First of all now that we have this new aerodynamic model we are limited to the velocity that we can travel when in the atmosphere of Kerbin. This means that traveling in excess of 300 meters per second under 10,000 meters of altitude will result in your aircraft being affected by Mach effects. It will actually receive the force of those Mach effects in, in the aerodynamics. As a result, your aircraft can take damage. So it's changed considerably the way that we fly SSTOs in the game. For example, I used to fly my SSTOs with a, a lot of power and I would take off and go vertically straight up in the air as fast as I could to efficiently get to a high altitude where I could then build up speed. Well, now if I was to try to attempt that I'd end up breaking my wings off or suffering some other sort of damage to the aircraft. Instead I've, I've chose this ascent profile of roughly 30 degrees. Now what you select for your SSTO could be a little bit different but I've just found with this guy uh, a 30 degree ascent profile seems to work pretty well. That's not to say it's perfect, it could probably be more efficient, but it's pretty good. Second, I have i don't go to 100% throttle until I cross over that 10,000 meters of altitude level. As you can see here, I'm at 60 or 70, 80% throttle, and I'm still climbing over 8,000 meters right now. The reason for this is until I cross that 10,000 meter mark, I could suffer damage to my aircraft. You can see on the bottom my distance traveling over the surface is at 212 meters per second and climbing. As soon as we hit 10,000 meters here in just a second, you'll see that throttle shoot up and um, we'll start to gain altitude and speed a little bit faster. There we go, I went ahead and maxed out my throttle. I kept that 30 degree ascent profile and I'm monitoring my air intakes now. If you look at the resources in the top right, I started with 15.6 air intake. It's dropping down now past three and a half. Uh, if, if that gets below one, I need to start worrying because I'm at risk of having a flame out on those rapier engines. So in order to increase air intake and speed now that I'm safely above 10,000 meters, I pitch my nose down. I take an ascent profile just under 20 degrees and uh, continue to monitor that air intake so those rapiers can get plenty of air and generate plenty of throttle. One of the challenges that I've faced with designing this aircraft in particular is efficiency. You'll see that I do get it into orbit, but I don't have much fuel to work with once I'm up there. So this introduces a whole new series of problems which are clearly uh, illustrated towards the end of the video. And uh, I hope you stick around to see it. But I know this is kind of boring, but I thought it was important to show the entire launch here in the beginning because they've changed so much from previous versions of Kerbal Space Program. And here you can see I'm getting mock effects and heating effects on the way out of the atmosphere. Now, if that heat negatively affects any of the parts on my spacecraft too much, that crap, that piece of equipment, so um, perhaps my landing gear or my RCS thrusters, could actually be overheated, damaged, and completely explode and fall off. So you have to be very careful when you get these mock effects. I'm watching my altitude right now and my speed. I pitch up a little bit to increase the rate of climb to get out of this soup and uh, get over these mock effects. And it also uh, decreases um, the heat that I'm, I'm suffering on the nose on the top of the aircraft. You see it now I've climbed over 20,000 meters. So those mock effects are going to start to taper off here momentarily. 
and you'll also notice that the effectiveness I'm getting with the air breathing mode on these rapier engines starts to decrease now. So now I'm looking at my speed at the bottom. I see it's 1207, 1208, and as soon as it levels off completely, I'm going to shut off my air intakes completely, and then I'm going to turn those rapiers into closed cycle mode and pitch up in order to gain altitude and speed and burning those rapiers like true rocket engines. Ah, and it's a beautiful sight. So I transition those air breathing engines to closed cycle engines. I close off my air intake to reduce drag and I pitch up, not fully vertical, but certainly over 90 degrees. And now I'm looking at my Kerbal Flight Engineer on the right side of the screen and the apolapse height. I'm trying to put that apolapse height at about 75,000 meters. I want my apolapse at about 75,000 meters and I want to make sure that my, distance, my speed traveling in orbit or over the surface is in excess of 1,500 meters. It's, it's a lot of numbers. It can get kind of complicated, but unfortunately with SSTOs, it's just one of those things that you kind of have to practice and get better and better at. And I'm by no means an expert. This thing failed so many times uh, before I was able to actually pull this off. So I set my apoaps at 75,000 meters. And as soon as it hit that, I cut the engines completely. Now I go ahead and open up that cargo bay and extend my solar panel so that I can keep my batteries charged while I'm conducting these orbital maneuvers. Here we speed up a little bit and... Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, get fast forward up to the apoaps. Now we are burning at the top of that apoaps in order to circularize our orbit. You can see the fuel is starting to become a concern. We're falling underneath 1600 units right now. The burn time is estimated at about 30 seconds. That's pretty normal for a circularization burn with an SSTO or, or at least with mine. Uh, so we'll, we'll circularize here and cut the engines um, and, and see what it looks like. One of the things I do like about this aircraft, it looks very pretty. Something that I struggle with in my designs usually is aesthetics. And I think for a work in progress, this guy came out looking pretty good. It, it needs to be more efficient for sure. I need more fuel once I get into orbit in order to maneuver. Um, but for now, I'm really happy with the way it's coming along. So as you can see, we've circularized at an orbit uh, between 75 and 80,000 meters above the surface of Kerbin. It's in a low Kerbin orbit, and we go ahead and go out here on an EVA real quick, a, a little photo op. After all, what's the point in coming all this way if we don't at least look cool doing it? A nifty little trick, if you guys are unfamiliar with a lot of EVA stuff, is if you hit uh, V, I believe it's V, uh, as in Victor, you can change the view, which change changes the way your Kerbal is positioned in the environment. So you can see here, we went from being vertical with respect to the spacecraft to now horizontal, which is outstanding for getting great thumbnails, which is exactly what's happening right now. Ah, but look at that as we float in a low Kerbin orbit in our new Mark III SSTO. It's a great shot. And enough of the play. It's time to get back to work and see if we can survive a re-entry with this thing. Which is the fun part, as you will see, I have no doubt. So we make our way back over to our Mark III workhorse and board the vessel. And now it's time to start thinking about coming home. So, some new things that we have to take into consideration with the 1.0 update is re-entry is deadly now. If we come in at too steep an angle, we will generate too much heat and we will explode. Conversely, if we come in at too slight an angle, we will skip across the atmosphere and end up overshooting our destination and as a result, be stranded in orbit. So we have to get this absolutely perfect. Additionally, I run into the problem here of, well, not having enough fuel to conduct my re-entry burn very close to the Kerbal Space Center. So we are right now almost 180 degrees on the other side of Kerbin while we're conducting this burn. So I'm really eyeballing it and I swear I got it on the first shot. Haha, <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> this took several attempts. You're seeing the successful one. And uh, so I conduct that retrograde re-entry burn. I put my 
ballistic trajectory about 30, 40 kilometers away from the Kerbal Space Center to its east. Planning, of course, on using the atmospheric effects to slow down my uh, my space plane upon reentry and conduct a safe and peaceful landing at the Kerbal Space Center. But before we do that, we've got to retract our solar panels and we've got to close our cargo bay or those pieces will surely be destroyed with the new deadly reentry effects. Next, we're going to open up our air intakes. We don't need the rocket engines anymore, so we open the air intakes. We turn those rapiers back into air breathing mode and get ready for reentry. And we fast forward here over to. As we enter our way into the atmosphere near the Kerbal Space Center, I continue to monitor our approach. It's looking good all the way through, but I'm running into, into some problems. If you look on the right side of the screen, you can see my liquid fuel remaining is 42.57 units. And yes, I've gone back to air breathing mode, so these rapiers are operating like jets, but that's really not that much fuel for 10 rapier engines you know maybe 10 seconds at full throttle maybe so I'm worried about that I've really got to be incredibly efficient with this reentry so to help with my slowdown you see I've deployed the air brakes there on top of either engine cluster and we start to get those pretty reentry effects now usually I would pitch up more with the nose in order to slow down a little bit faster or at least in order to reduce the amount of heat and friction that I'm getting from the atmosphere. However, because I don't have much fuel left, I want to get low faster. So I've I've selected to keep my nose kind of on the horizon. And of course, as we slow down more and more, especially without any thrust behind us, the aircraft becomes more and more unstable. I know that if I fire the engines, I can regain control of it with the aid of that thrust, but I don't want to burn my fuel, particularly now as it looks like I'm going to overshoot the Kerbal Space Center and have to conduct some sort of aero braking maneuver in order to come down and successfully land. So at this point, I'm not even sure if a safe landing at the Kerbal Space Center is going to be possible, but I'm going to go for it anyway. So our altitudes drop down to about 18.5 and our speed is dropped down to close to 500 meters per second. And you can see those air brakes caused me to lose control of the workhorse and now we're tumbling completely out of control towards the ocean off the coast of the Kerbal Space Center. After that long journey, Mission Control was hoping they'd be able to see a successful test flight of the Mark III workhorse SSTO and instead they're going to have to watch it crash violently into the ocean off the coast of the Kerbal Space Center. I've left my RCS activated so I can try to use it to get my nose on my direction of travel. That's that yellow mark on my nav ball on the bottom. And I'm just fighting this thing trying to regain control of it. Once again, I know if I fire my engines that I would be able to gain control of it. But if I fire my engines too soon, I will run out of fuel before I get to the space center. And as a result, plummet into the earth. So it's a real balancing act at this point in order to try to pull this thing off. It's definitely an emergency situation. And if I'm able to pull this off somehow... It's going to be an incredible feat as far as piloting in Kerbal Space Center goes. So I was kind of feeling it out. I'd elected to fire the engines. As you see, I quickly regained control of the aircraft. But you got to watch that fuel in the top right. We're dropping fast below 35 units. And I don't know if I'm going to have enough fuel to successfully get me all the way to the airstrip. So I'm watching my speed on the bottom too can't exceed 300 meters per second and we're also coming in at a really weird angle so it's going to have to be some sort of crosswind landing. I certainly don't have time to go around or try to fix my approach. I'll certainly run out of fuel so my only option here is to get close to the runway and then throw in some left rudder and try to change my direction of travel, deploy the wheels, deploy the brakes and hope that things go my way. So here I've... we're still burning fuel. We're dropping below 19 units now. I'm getting almost no thrust out of those engines, just barely enough to stay in the air and keep control of the spacecraft. It's, uh, it's, I'm really wrestling with it at this point. And now I'm trying to fix my approach 
by throwing some left rudder in there and I'm, I'm, it's just it's not looking very good my speed now is dropping to 120 meters per second and alas it looks like I might actually pull this off but watch that liquid fuel the units are dropping below eight now and it's gonna be close speeds dropping pretty quick that runway is coming up fast and at this point I just don't know if I'm gonna make it liquid fuel is now below five units and I'm over the runway I engage the brakes cut the throttle deploy the drogue chutes and we are safely oh and we start to spin off of the runway and it looks like we're gonna tumble out of control completely but somehow some way our landing gear manages to hang on Wow, what an ending. I really hope you guys enjoyed my video today. I definitely enjoyed making it. If you want to see more videos like this, please rate, comment, subscribe. If you want to see something different, just let me know what it is. I really enjoyed doing this, but I do it for you guys. So let me know if I can do anything to make your viewing experience better. Enjoy playing Kerbal Space Program.